What's up, everybody? We're back with another Practical Svelte 5 video. This time, we're going to be talking about the Svelte Context API along with Svelte's Reactivity APIs, more specifically looking at class-based reactivity and combining it with the Context API to be able to share state across the entire application in a safe way. And the scenario today is that we have a toast system that we're going to be implementing. So of course, I've already laid out some of the bare bones structure, but as usual, none of the functionality is there. Right, all we have is some basic markup. The goal here is to be able to use this form to add toast notifications to our application. Now, of course, in reality, you wouldn't have a form that does this. You would be programmatically doing it. But just to demonstrate that this does, in fact, work, we added this form here. And we should be able to see these toasts on any page and potentially trigger them from any page. All right, so now let's look at what we're starting with code-wise. In this basic application, we'll start the layout and kind of work through. There's not too much going on here. We have a very basic layout set up. We are just importing a toaster component, a nav component, rendering them, and then just rendering the page content within this main element here. Now the toaster is currently hard coded with a toast. So we can start to see the structure of a toast that has an ID, a title, and a message. And the toaster's responsibility is to contain all of the toasts, right? So it's gonna stack all those toasts in the top right. And that's where you can see the absolute uh, positioning set up here, as well as flex call which will then stack those toasts, right? So we can immediately think, hey, we're probably gonna wanna iterate over a list of toasts to render them all out here. Now the toast itself is really straightforward. It accepts a toast as a prop or a toast object, and then renders out those different parts of the toast. Now something to keep in mind here is that we have a button that enables the user to close the toast. So that's something that we have to take into consideration when designing our toast state API that we're gonna design here in a little bit. Okay, so now if we look at the navigation, we'll see we just have home and posts. I added posts here in case you wanted to get crazy with it and really see how far down context will go and, and do some cool stuff with it, but it really isn't super important, the navigation. And then the page itself, we just have a title that says homepage. We have a form that's not doing anything at the moment. You can imagine this is eventually going to create an issue a toast notification to our app, uh, but currently it's just set up here, ready to be configured. Okay, so moving back to the layouts, let's first think about what we mean by global states. I've made a video on this, so if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend you go watch it. I'll leave a link to it down below and probably a card maybe pop up somewhere on the top of the screen. But the root layout is able to provide context to the entirety of your application, right? So every component, every page, every nested, deeply nested component within those pages, are able to reach up and grab from the root layout. So in this case here, since this is a toast notification system, it makes sense to have this in the root layout. Okay, so this is where we'd want to in instantiate or set our context. And then all of the other uh, consumers of that context would then be able to reach up and grab it. And if you haven't already, I would highly recommend giving this a shot yourself. Take the starter code down below and see what kind of solution you come up with because it might be better than mine. If so, I would love to see it. And it's a good challenge for yourself to see, okay, what can I figure out on my own without having to watch a step-by-step -step tutorial? Um, and just, you know, it's a good experiment, good exercise, get you familiar with Svelte 5. For those of you who are gonna hang out, let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a .svelte.ts file that's gonna contain this class that's gonna kind of control our toast state, okay? So I'm gonna name this file toast-state.svelte.ts. So within this file here, we're gonna set up basically a class that just defines and controls our toast state, okay? So we'll say toast state. And in this toast state, what are we gonna have? Well, we're gonna have for sure an array of toasts. And I'm not sure if I showed you already or not, but we have this toast type here that we're exporting from types. That's the only shared type that we have. We're using it in the toast component and we're also gonna use it here, okay? So what we can do is we can say toasts equals state and we'll import that toast type and we'll just initialize it with an empty array. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll set up a constructor. We're not gonna need it immediately, but we will use it eventually because we're not actually passing anything into the toast state by default, right? So if this was a production toast uh, component, then maybe you wanna have like some default settings, like the duration that the toast stays on the screen and then be able to override it on a toast by toast basis. Uh, but something like that might make sense here, some defaults, as well as anything else you can think of that might make sense to apply to all the toasts that you want to instantiate this with. But right now we don't have anything. The next thing that we need to do is add the ability to actually add a toast, right? So if we look back at our page, we have this form here. You can see that we have a title, a message, and then a button to add the toast. And then if we look at the type, we have an ID. 
Now the ID is important because we want to be able to remove the toast, right? So if we look back at the toast itself, we can see it has an X up here. So when a user clicks that, we would expect the toast to immediately close. Well, in order to do that, we actually have to be able to identify the toast and we don't want to trust the title or the message because those could be duplicates. We want to have some sort of source of truth as to what represents this toast. And that's going to be an ID. Okay, so back in here, we're going to set up a new method on this um, class and we'll call it add. It's going to take a title, which will be a string, a message, which will be a string. And then we'll also add the ability for the user to customize the duration that this toast is going to stay on the screen for. So we'll say duration and we'll default this to uh, 5,000 milliseconds. We'll actually say duration MS just to be a bit more explicit there. And that's going to be five seconds. Now, it's up to you what you think that should be as a default. That's what we're going to set it at for this video. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually construct a toast. Now, we're going to kind of do this in two, two steps here. So first, I'm going to create an ID. So I'm going to say ID is going to be crypto.randomuid. Use whatever random generate ID generation solution you think is best. I'm just using what's already in the browser. And you'll understand why I'm putting the ID outside of you know, the toast creation here in just a second. So now we can say this.toast.push. And we're going to push the ID, we'll pass the title, and we'll pass the message, just like so. All right. Now, since this is reactive state, it's going to then cause whatever depends on this state to react and to render out those changes. Now, if we notice here, the duration MS is like, hey, uh, you haven't used me yet. So that's where this comes into play. So with Toast, typically they stay for a set period of time. So how do we go about actually ensuring that this thing goes away? whenever that time is done. And so before we try to actually implement a timeout and then have it remove it on a timeout, we should probably implement the remove method here. So add another method called remove. It's just gonna take in the ID. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this.toasts equals this.toasts.filter and toast, toast.id is not equal to ID, all right? And so now what we can do is we can actually have a timeout to get set that calls this remove function after that specified duration. So we could say set timeout and we'll have duration MS down here and we'll say this dot remove ID. And that's why I went ahead and declared the ID up here first. That way I could reference it in the timeout. Whereas if I would have just called it in here, it would have been a little bit more annoying. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, Hunter, are you really just gonna set a timeout like that and not have any way of cleaning up after yourself? And no, of course not. So if we think about this, we're setting a timeout here to remove something, but then we also want to give the user the ability to programmatically remove it as well. So when that person or that user programmatically clears that toast, we should also clear the timeout that's going to try to remove that ID again. Now, is it actually hurting anything severely by being there? No, but when these things stack up, it can really cause some serious performance issues in your application, introduce memory leaks, all kinds of nasty stuff that you don't want to get involved in. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a map, not a reactive map from Svelte. We'll talk about those maybe in another video. It's just going to be a plain old JavaScript map. So we'll say toast to timeout map. And the key for the map is going to be a string and the value is going to be a number. And that number is going to be the timeout. We'll get returned from the timeout so that we can actually clear it whenever we remove the toast. Okay, so by default, this is going to be empty. And so rather than just calling set timeout down here, we'll say this dot toast to timeout map dot set. We'll pass in the ID and then we'll pass this timeout in as the value, right? And this is going to return a number. Okay. So it's still going to call this function, but now we have a reference to the timeout that's associated with that specific toast. And then for remove, we can just say timeout equals this dot toast to timeout map dot get ID. So we're looking for the timeout that's associated with this ID. And then if there's a timeout, we're going to clear that timeout like so. And then we'll go about actually removing the toast. Now, it's not just enough though to clear the timeout because what do we have floating around? We have that toast ID in this map just kind of chilling there with no timeout. So we'll say this dot toast to timeout map dot delete ID as well. So we are cleaning up for ourselves when it, when remove is called, if there's currently a timeout, we're going to clear it and then we're going to update the toast. And this is all great, nothing too crazy here, but something else that's good hygiene is that we should probably just clean up the toast, the timeouts in the constructor as well. And in here we can call, you know, effects, which basically an effect that doesn't have anything in it, that doesn't have any dependencies and just return something can be treated as an on destroy. 
However, since on destroy isn't going anywhere, according to the salt team, we might as well use that here because it's just a bit more explicit. And these lifecycle methods can be used outside of the components because this toast state is going to be instantiated inside of the lifecycle of a component. And so we can just say on destroy. So we'll say for const timeouts of toast to timeout map dot values. So we're going to get every value from the toast to timeout map. And we'll say clear timeouts, timeouts. And then at the very end, what we'll do is we'll just say toast to timeout map dot clear. Okay, so this makes sure that whenever this, whenever the component that initialized this state gets destroyed, we're also going to clean up all the timeouts that we have that are still floating around. We're also going to ensure that we clean out the toast to timeout map as well to ensure that we don't have any issues there. Okay, so just to reiterate here, we are just initializing a state with, it's going to be a t an array of toasts. We have this toast to timeout map that's keeping track of the toast to timeout mapping. We are ensuring that we clean up everything on destroy of the parent instantiating component for this toast state. We also have an add method, which allows us to add new toasts. So basically pushing a new toast into that array. And then also we are actually adding something to the map, a function that's gonna eventually remove the toast once its duration has passed, which we're defaulting to five seconds. And then we have remove, which will then of course clear the timeouts and then remove that toast. All right, so now that we have all this, now we can actually start to set up our context. And if you've seen my past video, you know that I don't like calling set context and get context from the components themselves because I have to you know, pass in my type every time. It's very error prone. It doesn't replicate all those changes across all the components. If I update the type or I update the key, I have to go into every component and change it. Just not a good practice in my opinion. So down here, I'm gonna set up my context method. So I'm gonna set one that sets the context and I'm gonna set one that gets the context. So we'll say set toast state. And this is not gonna take in anything, right? Because our constructor doesn't take in any arguments. If it did, I would pass those here, but it doesn't. Okay, and now we also need a key. So we'll say toast key. And we'll use a symbol here and we'll just call it toast. It doesn't matter. This will guarantee that this key for this context is unique across any other Thing, any other library that we import, any other context that we create, this is always going to directly pull back this specific context. So we'll say return set context, we'll pass in the toast key as the key, and then we'll instantiate a new toast state. And then if we hover over this, we'll be able to see that this returns a toast state, which is great, that's what we want. Because little known fact is that set context will actually return whatever you set in the context as well. And then we'll have a function called get toast state. It's also not gonna take in any arguments. And it's going to return get context and we'll pass in that toast key. Now, what I like to do here with context methods is I could, of course, just pass in toast state like this. But what I found to be even more of a guarantee that I'm always going to make sure I always get the same thing that this thing sets is to say return type, type of set toast state. And this way, I can update this however I want. Maybe I return an object, maybe I add some new things to it. And this will always stay the same. It's never going to drift away from the setter of that context. It's always going to be the same. Okay, so now we have these two functions defined. We actually start getting this thing wired up and start using it. And the first thing we need to do is set up the place where we're actually going to set the toast state. And that's going to be in our root layout here. So I'm going to go ahead and import set toast state from that file that we created there. And I'm just going to call set toast state. I don't actually need a reference to the value. I don't need to actually assign it to a variable because in this file, I'm not actually using it anywhere. But this is where we're gonna go ahead and set that up, initialize it, that way everything else can consume from it. And then the next thing we'll do is go into our toaster and get rid of this hard-coded toast and start to actually render out that dynamic list of toast. So we'll say const toast state is gonna be get toast state like this. So now we're using the getter. So we use the setter once, we use the getter everywhere else. Now we'll get rid of this and then we'll say each toast state dot toasts as toast and we'll pass it in just like that. Now, if we check our application, we'll notice that our toast went away, of course, because we don't have any toasts in that store. So let's go ahead and wire up the page that's going to allow us to add toasts to the store. So we'll set up a script tag, get toast state. Toast state is going to be equal to get toast state just like this. And then now we have access to the toast. But we also have access to those methods as well. And now for this form, what we're going to do is we're going to 
bind the value of each of these to a variable, to a, a reactive state variable. So we'll say title, it's gonna be state. We'll also have message, which is also gonna be state. And then what I like to do with forms like this is I like to actually bind to the reference, the input element, the first input element. That way when I submit the form, I can refocus the first input because I know in this case, I'm gonna keep adding toast over and over again. So it just makes my life a bit easier. So we'll say title input is also gonna be state. This one's gonna be an HTML input element like so. All right, and then we can just simply bind the value of this to title. We can bind the value of this one to message. And then we can actually bind this equals title input like so, okay? And then now inside of our on submit handler, we're preventing default because we're not submitting it to a server. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say toast state dot add, and we have that title message, and then also we have a duration. We'll leave duration at 5,000 by default for now. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna clear out title. So reset the form basically, right? Message is also gonna be cleared out. And then we're gonna say title input dot focus. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and test this out. So I'm just gonna type some random stuff in here and add a toast. I'll do it again. We can see that it is working. And after a few seconds, the toasts start to disappear. What we haven't yet wired up though, is the ability to get rid of the toast by clicking that X on the toast itself. So let's go ahead and head back into our toast component. And we'll do the exact same thing that we did with the others. We'll say, get toast state. And then on the button click, we'll say on click, toast state dot remove toast dot ID. So remember we're passing toast in as a prop here. So we're just gonna pass this specific toast ID to that function to remove it. And now let's just make sure this message works correctly. We click on the X, the toast gets immediately removed. And again, we can navigate around the different pages. We could add a way to programmatically add a toast on mount. So if we go to the slug page, one of these pages on mount, we'll also import get toast state. And then we'll set up the toast state, of course. And then we'll have on mount, we'll say toast state dot add. Welcome to post. We hope you enjoy this read. And we can customize the duration. We'll make this one stay for 10 seconds. So we go back to our application. We're now getting this message. If we go to post two, we're gonna see this start to stack a little bit because I added those 10 second delays and eventually they're all gonna trickle away unless we close them manually. So yeah, that's how we can leverage, you know, reactive classes in Svelte 5. This could also be a function. I think the classes are a bit cleaner in this case alongside the context API to kind of give ourselves a global reactive state. And I hope this example kind of helped it resonate with you. Uh, if you have any questions or I did anything weird, feel free to let me down in the comments below. Yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one.